Um, Professor Bogdanov, there's been a lot of talk about legitimacy. If there is a hung parliament, i.e. neither Labour nor Conservatives have an overall majority, who has the right or the legitimacy to form a government? Who has the right to form a government in those circumstances is a matter of opinion. Legitimacy is subjective. There are clear constitutional rules about who does form a government, and that depends upon who can command the support of the House of Commons. That's decided by the Queen's speech. Now, legitimacy is the question of whether people like the outcome. They might well not. And, of course, if they're predicting a certain outcome, that might affect the way they vote. If they don't like it when it comes about, they might vote differently next time. But the constitutional rules are absolutely clear. Whether people like the outcome or not is another question. And, um, Ruth, a lot of uh, Conservative supporters are saying, look, if David Cameron is the leader of the largest party, he will have probably got the single party that's got the most votes. Surely it should be him who forms the government. Well, yes, if he can command a majority of support in the House of Commons. If he can't, then no, he can't form the government. Um, simply having most seats, if you haven't reached the winning line, um, doesn't enable you to, to form a government because you can't win votes in the House of Commons. Fundamentally, it's can you command the confidence of the House. If he hasn't got a majority, then he can't. It may well be that although Ed Miliband may end up with fewer seats, um, there is a, a greater array of other parties that are more left of centre, if you like, who are more inclined to support him than they are to support the Conservatives. So what about in the, in the immediate aftermath of, of an election? Who gets to try the confidence of uh, the House of Commons first? Assuming that Ed Miliband says, look, there's a uh, progressive alliance which has majority, and David Cameron says, well, actually... I've, I, you know, I've, I've, I am the largest leader of the largest party, I think I should go. What, what happens then? The first decision is that of David Cameron as the incumbent Prime Minister. He can either resign immediately, or he can try and form a coalition or agreement with another party or parties, or he can test the feeling of Parliament by presenting a programme in the Queen's speech and seeing whether it's voted down or not. But as to the question of legitimacy, let's say he gets 36% of the vote and Labour gets 34% of the vote for argument's sake. Is it legitimate for him to be able to govern alone when 64% of the country vote against him? I mean, when you are so much below 50%, uh, as Ruth Fox was implying a moment ago, should you be allowed to govern without having the support of other parties? I mean, that was the point about the deal which was done last time between Labour and uh, Liberal Democrats and Conservatives, was that they, when they got together and had a formal agreement, they had a clear majority. So does that mean, Ruth, that actually it's better to form a coalition than to try and go with a minority, as I have to say at the moment the party leaders seem to say they're inclined to do. Not necessarily. I mean, it depends on the numbers and it depends how, how the parties feel in terms of, of policy issues. I mean, the reality of minority government, though, if that is the way they go, if that's what Ed Miliband set his mind to, is um, in a five-year parliament, minority government will be very, very difficult to sustain day-to-day, vote-to-vote uh, over that period. Frankly, it will be exhausting. Um, so they might get to sort of a period and think, we wish we had had a coalition if we could have put the numbers together. But the numbers have got to work for him for that to, ha to happen. And how much uh, control of this situation do the leaders of the other parties have? I mean, uh, Nicola Sturge is not even standing in this election. She said no deals with the Tories. Nick Clegg is saying, well, I could go either way. Could he really go either way? Yes. Uh, if a party could go either way, it has leverage. There are only two parties which can do that, the Liberal Democrats and the Democratic Unionists of Northern Ireland. The SNP can't afford to undermine a Labour government. It would ruin their position in Scotland. UKIP can't really afford to undermine a Conservative government. But, the, but there is some process, all of them have said, of consulting their own party members. Well, I think they've announced their position, and that stops them having much leverage. But, of course, it would be better, as you implied a moment ago, if you could get a coalition, because the last government, a coalition, whatever one thinks of the merits of its policies, which obviously are a matter of opinion, it did provide strong, stable government with a majority of 78 over a period of five years. That raised a very different question of legitimacy, I think, because it was formed after the election and people who voted Liberal Democrat in 2010 were not aware that there would be a coalition with the Conservatives. Most of them, I suspect, were on the left and hoped for a coalition with Labour. And you may remember, if you've got a long memory, as I'm sure you have, The Guardian recommended a vote for Liberal Democrats to secure what they called a progressive coalition. That didn't come about. Was that legitimate? Well, it's interesting. Now we've got uh, several newspapers calling for a repeat of uh, the Lib Dem Conservative coalition. But 
Ruth, what about this idea that if you don't have the party that comes first in a coalition, in a government, effectively you've got a so-called coalition of the losers? Well, only if you look at politics in a very binary Labour versus Conservative way. But we're, well, this is why we're in new territory, because we've got fragmented politics, multi-party politics. And if you look at both the percentage of votes and the seats, that there will be a majority that is anti-conservative, most probably. We won't know till Friday, but probably there will be a majority that's anti-conservative. So that's not, that's not about winning and losing. That's only if you look at it from a very, very clear Labour versus Conservative If you boil all this down... Does this mean, on the basis of what we know now about the opinion polls and the Constitution and everything else, it looks, roughly speaking, 50-50, whether it's going to be Miliband or, or, or Cameron? I think that's absolutely right. Uh, and I think Ruth has made a fundamental point that our political culture may be changing. People talk of a second election, but would that yield a very different result? If our political culture is changing and we're moving into a multi-party system, Perhaps we ought to look critically at a lot of our institutions, including the electoral system, our parliamentary arrangements and so on, which were really designed for a two-party battle. That perhaps is the fundamental challenge facing the politicians well, after the election. I know both of you would be on hand with sage advice <laughs> in those circumstances. Thank you very much indeed.